You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Ari Whitmer, and this is your NXT update for Wednesday, July 5, 2017. It is the 400th episode of NXT. And folks, it is hard to believe that this is the same show that once upon a time featured talent contests, Mustache promos, Percy Watson being attacked by Percy Watson, the Goldust Oksana wedding, where Oksana would be deported by Agent Dickapopoulos, Johnny Curtis's van, the Derek Bateman, Maxine, Caitlin, Johnny Curtis love rectangle, and one of my all time favorites, Matt Stryker being kidnapped only on NXT but it continues to appear on every other WWE show, including WrestleMania. With that out of the way, let's get on to a show that somehow in the same universe, but a completely different stratosphere as the show I just described. NXT 400 kicked off with Sanity, in the guise of Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf going two on two with Hideo Itami and Cassius Ono. Ono and Itami, as you may recall, have been at loggerheads the last few weeks due to Itami's frustration at not winning the NXT Championship. This particular match was set up last week when Sanity beat down both Ono and Itami. Wolf took an Ono knee to the face so hard that he flew into the babyface corner and tried to tag out. Shockingly, that did not work, um, and he was on the receiving hand of kicks from both babyfaces. Finally, Wolf took out a Tommy, and Sanity got the heat on Hideo. Um, Early on, the only thing notable was that Wolf held the tag rope in his mouth. And I'm kind of shocked that Vince still insists on tag ropes, since you would think that kind of thing is, quote-unquote, old-school wrestling. Um, The story of this match was that Atami finally was able to break free and went for the hot tag. However, Cassisono was not there. He wasn't there because... Uh, Alexander Wolf had snuck around a few seconds earlier, yanked Ono off the apron, and was in the middle of a confrontation with the man um, when Atami was trying to make that tag. Um, Atami finally made his comeback and hit the Percy Watson trademark Kobayashi-style kicks. Um and Ono got back on the apron and was reaching for the hot tag. However, Tommy basically ignored him. Um, Hideo, Tommy, and Cassius Ono argued until Wolf gave Ono the big boot off the apron. Tommy went for the goat to sleep, but Dane blind tagged himself in. Alexander Wolf, noting that he's no longer the legal man, took one for the team, took a go to sleep, was laid out. And as he hit the ground, Killian Dane slammed over 300 pounds of body into the body of Hideo Itami and pinned him and picked up the win here in the opener of NXT this week. Earlier today, a bunch of arms were at the Performance Center and asked Ember Moon about facing Asuka. Ruby Wright, who just happened to be standing nearby, took offense to this and told Ember that it was her time since she never got her shot. I guess the two triple threat matches, including the elimination match, Ruby was the only one pinned, doesn't count as getting her shot. We had a Drew McIntyre video package, which led to Drew doing an interview about tonight's main event. Drew said that it would be a fantastic match, but the next time he gets asked about the NXT Championship, they'd be asking about his championship match. Drew said that he has to join the lineage of NXT champions to prove he's the best, and he doesn't care if he has to face Rude, Strong, or the undefeated Killian Dane, 
all roads lead to his NXT championship. Uh, we were reminded um, of Tommaso Ciampa's turn on his longtime friend Johnny Gargano a few months ago at NXT TakeOver Chicago, and that led to the announcement that next week, Johnny Wrestling will make his first NXT appearance in two months. Kayla Braxton was at the Performance Center with the pouting Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Why were they pouting? Because it was just Billy Kay's birthday, and no one bothered to put together a birthday celebration for her. Only Peyton gave her a present. Only Peyton brought her a cake. And unfortunately for her, this wasn't even the most important part of uh, what was going on at that moment. Because conveniently, at that very moment, in the background, Andrade Cien Almas was arguing with Dia Trinidad. As the cameras ran up to them, they both stormed off in opposite directions. We got highlights of a match that must have been so bad that they refused to air it on TV. As, quote-unquote, last week, Bianca Belair defeated Aaliyah to qualify for the Mae Young Classic. July 24, they're doing one of those WWE Performance All Access Tours. I still remember when they advertised one for weeks and months before the Royal Rumble last year. And then they aired a video uh, where they tried to pretend that this was a random surprise for a random group of fans who just happened to be there and didn't pay a couple hundred dollars or however much it is per person to do that. Uh, They re-aired the Bobby Roode Roderick Strong video package, and on their way to the ring, both Roode and Strong said a few last words to the camera. Strong said the only thing on his mind is victory. While Root said that Strong has been living a fairy tale for the last six weeks, but now his fairy tale faces a reality, and that reality is glorious. So it's time for the main event. Only two matches on this one hour episode of NXT this week. Is Roderick Strong challenging the glorious NXT champion Bobby Root for the NXT championship? And speaking of titles that Rude is trying to hold, uh, Rude, in his quest to become the undisputed WWE Slow Walk Champion, took two minutes and ten seconds to walk all the way down the tiny ramp and into the ring this week. Uh, Noted was that Strong's mother and wife, uh, MMA fighter Marina Schaefer, were sitting at ringside, and they cut to Marina multiple times in this match, to the point that you were expecting her to get involved in the finish, which in a way she was, but still not really. Uh, Rude took strong lightly the first few minutes until he went to mock Roddy with his glorious pose, but Strong drop-kicked his head clean off. Rude tried rolling out of the ring, but alas, Strong followed him outside and beat him from pillar to post. Um, Eventually... Rude was finally able to finally take over on Strong when they were fighting outside and somehow Strong got caught in the ring steps and caught his knee and his leg in between the ring steps and the ring post and completely busted up the knee of the challenger. And so as you can imagine, this match then turned into all about Rude and Strong's knee. As Strong desperately tried to fight to his feet after minutes of Rude working on his knee, Strong would get beat down and beat down and beat down and fight and drag and claw and bring himself to his feet. And then uh, Rude would knock him down again. And so Strong would have to fight and claw again to get to his feet. And Rude would knock him down again. Strong finally hits the gut check, but Rude just barely kicks out before the referee's hand hit three. Rude slammed Strong's knee into the ring post, but Strong was still able to fight back, um, including dropping Rude on the top turnbuckle, but Rude rolled outside before a cover could happen. 
Rude finally hits his glorious DDT, but Strong kicks out, which was actually the first time the fans made noise as they got behind Strong. Rude then proceeded to start mocking Marina and told her to leave ringside, which led to Strong making a fiery comeback. Strong's knee connected with Rude's jaw multiple times. He hit his re- release souple into a backbreaker, made the cover. The referee counted one. The referee counted two. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Roderick Strong pins Bobby Roode as the referee's hand hits the three count. And Roderick Strong goes into the outside to celebrate with the fans, to celebrate with his wife. He is your new NXT champion. However, Rude's foot was underneath the bottom rope. The referee saw this and had to wave it off. Strong's music was playing. The announcer made the announcement that he was the new champion. Strong was not paying attention to what was going on in the ring. Finally, the referee gets out and tells him. So Strong starts to get back into the ring, but Rude knocks him off the apron, and Strong crashes into the guardrail in front of his wife, in front of his mother, and then Strong goes out, and again in front of his wife, in front of his mother, drops Strong with a glorious DDT outside the ring, rolls him back in the ring, hits one on the inside, and makes the cover, and no, ladies and gentlemen, dreams do not come true. Bobby Roode is still your NXT champion. So that does it for NXT 400, an excellent main event. Um, I know some people described it as as good as a takeover main event, I don't know if I'd agree with that, but it was still a very good match. And I want to thank you all for listening. Let's raise a glass to the next 400 episodes of NXT and see where in the world we are in seven years, huh? So until next week, thank you all for listening and have a great week. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.